Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I wanted to talk to you about getting your message bundles and properties files to work with struts. Now, the specifics of this tutorial is it's going to show you how to get to work with struts annotations, which is a little different than using the standard struts XML file, and it's going to show you how to do it with action classes. Specifically, I've got another tutorial that'll deal with package-based and global properties. This one will show you how to solve the problems that a lot of people have when they're working specifically with message bundles, properties files, annotations, and struts action class. As you can see here, I've got a nice struts input form, but you can see where it says first name, last name, email. That's all hard coded here inside the register.jsp file. And what I'd like to do is instead of putting things inside of a register.jsp file, I'd like to have a properties file. And you can map an action class like this, a register action class, and the results that happens when that register action class runs, you can map that to a properties file. And here's all you have to do. So that class is called register action, and it's in the com.mcnz.struts package. I'm going to create a new package under resources with the exact same name, so com.mcnz.struts. I'll click finish, and in here I'm going to create a properties file with the exact same name as the action. So register action.java gets matched with a new file called register action.properties. And what I do inside this properties file is I simply put key value pair. So I want the first name to say, hey, put in your first name. I want where it says last name to say, put in your last name. Now this could be a little different. Notice it just says first name right now, last name right now. When I use these key value pairs, it'll say your first name and your last name. And that just allows us to differentiate between what's coming in by default here originally and what's going to come in after we've updated this. Now the way things change a little bit is rather than using name and label, we just use key. We get rid of that label there. And so we just say key equals, key equals, key equals. And you'll notice that that key, person being dot first name, maps to the properties file person being dot first name. And we don't need the label, right? Because that label is coming from that properties file. So I'll delete all of this. Everything looks really handsome, really good. We've got my properties file in the exact same package, the exact same name, except a different extension. And everything is mapped here, which is mapped inside of the register.jsp. And so now the theory is when this runs, everything will work and when we look at this page, instead of saying first name, which was originally hard coded, it's actually gonna say your first name. Now, here's the, the rub. This isn't gonna work. Um, so I'm gonna restart my server, and it's gonna partially work. And the reason it's not gonna work is, normally when I run this register.jsp page, I just right click on it and say run as, run on server and everything comes up here. Notice this has kind of changed already. We're now definitely getting the, the latest version, but it's just saying person being dot first name, which is what's printed here inside of the, the key value inside of the S text field. Uh, it's actually not pulling up what's in my properties file where it should say your first name. Now watch this, here's the weird thing. If I actually submit this file, it actually works. Okay, so now when I submit the file, it's actually pulling that detail. What's that email F? What is that nonsense there? Okay, so the reason why it works when I click submit, but not when I ask for the JSP directly, is because in order for these keys to, to work, you have to go through a struts action first. So when I just call up register.jsp, that's just calling the JSP file directly. It's not going through any struts component. However, when you click submit, so notice register.jsp right there, no struts. But when I click submit, the submission is going through the register action, right? That's what the submit does, goes through the register action. The validation fails. It then says redisplay this page and get more input. And now struts is redisplaying the page and because it's going through the struts action, it's actually pulling out the keys. So 
well, how do you fix this, right? We want these to come up the first time somebody calls register.jsp. Well, the fix is you don't call register.jsp directly. What you do is you go into your action class and you can see right now everything goes through execute. Well, we're going to create a slightly different URL. When somebody wants to call the register.jsp directly, they'll call an action named display. So they'll go, you know, struts form handling slash display dot action. And then that will end up calling the JSP, but that'll go through an action class. So watch this. I'm going to create a, a new method here and I'll just call it, you know, just call it display. It doesn't really matter what I call it. Public string display. It's a new method. It returns input and input is mapped to register.jsp. That's where we get input. I'm also going to specify a new action for it. So the action for this method is anybody that calls display. The basic act, act the basic action for this class is register and so execute when they call this that's the but if someone actually calls slash display anywhere in this struts project in this namespace it's actually going to call this method now one problem is if i run this it's going to try and validate and the validate will trigger a null pointer exception so in fact even if i try and get this to work right now I may have to restart my server in order to get the latest thing to to work here i'm going to do a little system dot out dot There we go, now it just gives us some feedback. But watch, if I try and run this, so call the display action right there, all of a sudden I end up getting a problem. Oh, and it looks like it's because in this case, that's not the problem I want. In this case, it's uh, somebody can't spell the word display properly. So let me fix that up. There we go, display. Notice a null pointer exception on validate. And that's because even though I'm going through this display action, this register action has a validate method and we're always going to validate before we actually go through the actual action method, right? That's, that's part of stress. So in order to really get this to work, I have to skip the validation, right? I don't want any validation. I just want to go directly to that page. So you can throw in the skip validation tag there. That'll tell struts, don't validate, just go directly to the page associated with the input return, which is register JSP. So I come over here, struts form handling. Now I say display dot action. And notice everything is coming up properly. Now, by the way, one of the other ways you could do that, potentially you could just um, create an index.jsp page or something along those lines and put a URL in there. So I could do something, throw this, I could, on my register page, I could add this link here. Now, it's, the register page is still going to not work when it first comes up, but then if you click on this link, it'll call that display action and then it will go through the action and then it will render properly. So what I've done here, so as you can see, I've created a little struts URL that will call the display action. I'll just call the, the URL display page link. And then I actually create the actual href link here, referencing this URL. I'll say, hey, please display. And then when I run this again, look, if I run it directly, run as run on server, I'm not going to get the key value pairs, right? Because it's a direct reference. But if I click please display, which forces it to go through the struts action, you'll notice everything works properly. And so there you go. Those are the ins and outs of using properties files and message bundles associated with struts actions. And there you go, that's how easy it is to deal with message bundles, properties, files, your struts, action, class, and annotations. As you can see, there's a couple of little tricks in there that you, it's pretty easy to get stuck on, but uh, hopefully by seeing me go through all the steps there, it irons everything's out for you. So anyways, if you enjoyed this tutorial, head over to theserverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there. Lots of great tutorials on Struts, Spring, Hibernate, anything to do with enterprise software development. If you're interested in my personal antics, follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.